In this video, we're going to show you how to reassemble an Autoprop H5 propeller using the service kit. So by now, you have the propeller in a thousand pieces. Um, everything's been nicely cleaned up and you're ready to reassemble the propeller. Uh, we're going to th go through just very quickly, step by step, um, how to rebuild the propeller. Now, the first thing you need to do is to get the hub into some position that you can work on it securely. Um, what we tend to do is we wrap the hub with a bit of duct tape and then we hold it in a pipe bench and it allows us then to rotate all three faces, work on it, assemble the bearings and not to damage the hub. The next step is to fit the lip seal into the blade. Now the blade has a channel that it actually fits in. Um, and when you've taken the old one out with a pair of pliers, you can see that these are quite a fragile thing. So this step, you should take some time and just get it right. Um, you can start it off by just gently pressing it in and it will start to take. And the idea is that um, you go around the lip seal and push it in um, but you don't want it to crease um, because as you try and pull them out and put them back in with a pair of pliers, you can tear these and these are quite expensive part. Um, what we do here is we take the lip seal and we push it on a, on, a, on a piece of bar like this and you just rock it backwards and forwards, turn it a little bit, rock it backwards and forwards, turn it a little bit and rock it backwards and forwards. And one more, you can see that's just popped out there. And just in the space of a, about 30 seconds to a minute or something, you should have these. Yeah, it's a little bit popped out there. There you go. So once you've finished, you want to be checking that the lip seal sits in uh, this little track really, really smooth and it's got no uh, raised parts so that the seal has got a, a really good fit because this is going to have hydrostatic pressure on it um, and there is a small, there will be a small air pocket inside um, but you want it to give it as, as much of a chance to have a good seal as possible. Next we take the, um, the blade caps um, there's a little o-ring that's su supplied with it Let's see if you can see that on camera so the little o-ring that came in the kit um, this just replaces the, um, the one you took off on the cap um, it does tend to get a lot of hard wear this one um, if you painted it, um, ablative paints tend to, to, to um, make the rubber hard um, and it just has a hard life. So it's an important part because we want this to have a good seal, again, to keep the grease intact, keep the bearings uh, in grease and keep all that water out. So we have the blade caps, the o-ring seals on. Uh, the last set of o-rings to come are the uh, screws that retain on the blades just here and on the blade caps in the center there. They're a little M5 bolt and they come with a, a tiny, tiny O-ring. Uh, sometimes um, in the packet they'll be, they'll be already attached. Um, I have one here. Uh, it's just missing that one. Again, just to make sure that you have them all, just simply roll it over and get it to the bottom. Um, I like to grease my O-rings, the caps and these. Um, just helps it all when it nips it up, makes it just a really nice, nice good seal. The next part of the process is to start to put on the taper roller bearing. Um, and what we're going to do is take out the, um, the bottom part of the roller bearing. Um, this is the narrowest part of the, the, the diameter. And these just sit inside the blades. You just gently push them. They're a nice gentle push fit. I'll just do another one. Now this is very important. The taper roller bearing um, obviously is tapered by its nature. You can see that on camera. So you want the smallest diameter um, towards the blade, towards the boss, and the largest diameter towards the blade, so that when you put a nut on this side, um, it holds it all together. If you did it the other way around, uh, with a larger diameter um, on the bottom, the, um, the bearing would not hold the blade, and the, the blade just comes off. Now this is a very, if people do this themselves, this has happened time to time, where they've not read the instructions and put them on backwards. Um, so it is a possible cause of failure. So please be very careful when you do this to put the taper roller bearing on correctly. Now the next part of the process is to get the propeller looking like a propeller again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start attaching the blades to the hub. Now to do that we need to put in the thrust bearing um, which consists of 23 little ball bearings and they sit on the tracks that are in the hub and, then, and also the track that is cut into the blade. Now, 
Once you took it apart, uh, if you remember, we, we mentioned that this may need to be reburnished and refinished if it's an older model. Um, it is possible to do this um, to get it back to be smooth. Obviously, with H6 and other models, the um, tracks, the races, they're replaceable, so you wouldn't actually have this problem. Um, but this one here, these are brand new blades going back on a hub, and this is a, um, a very clean hub, so there's not an issue there. Now, what I like to do to do this is take a grease gun, and I like to put a, a little bit of grease. Um, what you tend to happen with the balls is they run around. Um, I've heard people wanting to use um, shave foam and other things just to put on the track. Um, we just we just recommend just a couple of pumps of grease and just to run it around the track just to give it something so that the ball's got something to stick to. So just a little bit to run around. Okay, so we've greased the hub. And now it's a case of putting the little balls into the track. Once you have the ball bearings in place, next thing to do is to locate the blade. Um, this just sits straight on top of them. You can feel it uh, connect with the track very easily. And you can see straight away it's starting to feel like an auto prop. Uh, next, take the taper roller bearing. Largest diameter, so the, the taper narrows as it gets towards the hub. That just slides over the top. And once you've done that, there's the nut, the, the, uh, the blade nut that sits on it, goes on next. Now this one again, the flat of the blade nut uh, sits towards the top of the bearing. Um, before you do that, you need to apply uh, Loctite to the threads, uh, quite liberally, but not too much. Uh, you don't want the Loctite to dribble into the, uh, the roller bearing and cause any problems there. Okay, so we just put our Loctite onto the threads. The nut is a right hand thread, just sits on and hand tightens. Once you have the blade set um, with the nut in place, the next thing to do is to tighten the nut down. Now the, the Bruntons make a, a special tool to do this, a little nut spanner with two spikes on. Uh, they just locate very nicely into the, uh, the grooves on the, uh, the nut. And I just use a, a bicycle torque wrench, set to about 14 newton meters. And you just tighten away until you get um, uh, the torque wrench to, to click into place. So that one's set now to 14 newton meters. Um, it is a bit of an iterative process. You want the blades to fall under their own weight. So they shouldn't, they should, as you tip them on this side, they should just gently fall down under their own weight. That's the, that's the, 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 the guide that you need to do. This one seems pretty good. The final piece in the puzzle to keep the blade in position is to fit the tab screw. Now this is a custom bolt that's manufactured by Brenton's and it's designed to hold this nut and stop it from unwinding. Now the way it works is that this is a right hand thread and this one is a left hand thread. So the two marry together and then once you've got them over one of the four tab, one of the four gaps on the nut there that we used to locate the spanner, you're going to bend one of the fronds really really securely into the nut there. Now this will then stop the nut from uh, unwinding and it'll keep the whole mechanism together. Um, it is a bit of an iterative process because you have to um, get the blade to the blades to fall under their own weight. So you kind of back off the nut a little bit and play with it just till you get it right. Then once it's right, you wind the tab screw on, and then you've got to get the tab screw as close as you can and bend one of the fronts. So fitting the tab screw is is very straightforward. It's a left hand thread. Again, we need to lock tight um, the threads, and then they would wind. Obviously, opposites, so as are your unwinding to tighten. Um, they're a little bit sharp and spiky and quite awkward to get in sometimes. Uh, Brunters make a tool to do it. There's a little one here. This is actually for a H6, um, so I've actually made one for a H5. Uh, again, just a little bit of steel, some uh, pins to locate it, and then you just wind and wind and wind until it locates. Once it's located, take a center pop and push one of the fronds in, and that's it finished. So we've fitted the tab screw, we've bent down the tab um, front, and the blade is now complete. Um, it's all locked in place. Uh, the only thing you need to do now is to take the blade cap, uh, which has its nice new o-ring on it, and locate that on the blade, and then tighten it up. Again, 15 newton meters, really, really nice and tight. Uh, just to nip the seal up, make it a good seal. Um, again, once we've finished this one, we would then repeat the process for all three blades, which I'm going to do in a second. 
Um, it does get more cumbersome to hold, I will give you that. Um, but it's exactly the same process, uh, grabbing it in the pipe vise, look at the bearings, build it all up, and then check again that the blade falls nicely under its own weight. It's not too stiff and it's not too flexible. So again, it's about 15 newton meters is normally the, the, the mark that we use. Um, and then once you've done that, um, we're going to be then greasing it and showing you how to, uh, to finish everything off.